Hey everybody, this is Bruce at Groxio, and today we're going to be talking about sigils in our series for blind spots for typical Elixir programmers. I think you're going to have a good time with this, so let's get started. In Elixir, a sigil is nothing more than an expression of a literal. You might not think that we need anything like that, and in fact we don't. I have a way to express, let's say, a list, a list of atoms, or a list of words, or a a string or even a string with an inner string and in this case I need to escape this character but you can start to see where I'm going I am specifying an increasing amount of ceremony that's repeated in here like in this particular case, I have a list of words that's expressed over and over, and each one of them has a close quote, comma, and an open quote embedded in it. And in this case, I have this string, and I have to, ha I have to basically burn a lot of CPU cycles internally as I read the code, because I need to put a backslash in front of each one of these quotes. So what's the solution to that? Well. It's a sigil. So all we're going to do is specify a bit of syntax. In this case, this tilde tells me that I'm going to specify a sigil. And there's a number of them that are available to me. And in this case, what I want is a list of words. So I'm going to say a list of words. What's happening here is this tilde says this is a sigil. This W tells me which sigil this is, and then these square brackets are delimiters, and I can pick from several. For example, I can use open parentheses, open ankle brackets, open square or curly braces. I can even use the vertical bar, the Unix pipe character, single quotes, double quotes, triple quotes. There's really a number of delimiters that I can use, but this allows me to take a bit of ceremony just on the front and the back end and remove the ceremony in between. So now I have a list of words and I can modify that by putting an option out here. This is a function tied to an operator that begins with a tilde and then has the name of the sigil it has to be a single character and then I have a delimiter, a binary in the middle, and another delimiter, and then options. So I can literally call this function sigil w. And I can call that. I said that this is the internal binary, and this is the format of it. It's a binary with a string inside, right? And then I can pass a list of the options, but I'm going to specify this as a char list because that's the easiest way. And this A character, I could really say, give me an ASCII A, but I could also do a char list. This is basically the same thing. And so that gives me the same thing. If I remove the option, well, I have to remove the option by passing an empty list. This is going to give me a list of atoms, which is what it, what was in that string. I could also have inside of here a C for a char list. And you could see that I have single quotes inside here instead. And there are a number of different sigils. You can find them either by saying exports kernel, right? And this is where all the sigils are going to be defined. Yeah, here they are right here. I had a hard time finding them. 
in the wall of functions. So there's an easier way if you have tab completions. I could say sigil since the kernel functions are imported in um, IEX, or at least most of them are, but I could say sigil and then tab. And this tells me all the sigils that are available to me. And you might notice that there's a uppercase version and a lowercase version that they're basically available because one does interpolation and one doesn't. But you can see that there are also a number of other sigils like this one, like the string. And so I had that case where I had a sigil S for a string and maybe I want angle brackets this time and I want to say this is a string with a one of those and one of those. And it's just as easy as that. Elixir does the escaping for me, which removes a lot of the complexity for me in learning how to escape things myself. This also comes in handy with things like regular expression. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about sigils in the context of a little program, but that's going to be next time. For Bruce from Groxio, this is Blind Spots for Elixir Developers.